you guys. I hope you enjoy the following video. Um, I spent a lot of time making it, and I actually thought I deleted it when I didn't, and then I created an extra intro version that, like this video, but then I accidentally deleted that, so I had to remake it again, which is what this is. <laughs> uh, don't know why I'm sharing all this, but anyways, I had a ton of fun making the following video. And hopefully it gets you guys thinking and inspires you guys, encourages you guys spiritually. And, you know, um, just if you're an believer, if you're an atheist or a skeptic, hopefully one of the things that I address in this video will speak to you and have you considering the Christian faith. Um... And, or at least just God in general. And for those of you who are believers, hope this, like I said, encourages you spiritually and you can take some comfort in this and learn. And it, if you're just throwing out the religion, I hopefully this gets you thinking about Christianity versus every other religion out there and the differences. Even though I don't, to the contrast directly, I indirectly tell you what the truth is, so hopefully you can, God will guide you and open your heart and uh, take the blinders off from, and I mean that respectfully, uh, but the Bible does say that those that believe not are blind, and so I'm just taking that from the scripture, so take it up with that, not with me. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, hopefully this causes you to see why Christianity makes sense, if not is true. Um, just like Paul witnessed to everybody, Paul the Apostle, and he went as a King Agrippa, I believe it was King Agrippa, and he said, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. But I hope this doesn't just almost persuade you. I hope it does. That's my agenda. I'm not afraid of hiding that. I want to see people come to Christ, and you will see that in this video. And I will see you guys in... One second. So welcome back to Sermon Sundays. I'm in shorts, but you don't see them, so all I need is a collared shirt, and I'm good to go. Um, so, anyways, we're going to be talking about a very good subject matter, I believe. Um, again, I'm using the Evidence Bible. And the subject that we're going to be talking about is another question and objection from the Bible. This Bible is by Ray Comfort and is available uh, in um, a new, it's available in a new version of this. It's on and the New King James Version and it's a slightly modified level. There's a hardback and then there's a softback, uh, which is a lot nicer than this one. Uh, this one is comfortable KJV, King James Version. It just takes out literally just the these and the thous in the archaic language as opposed to the New King James which kind of clears up the text a little bit and makes it a little bit cleaner in my opinion. Um, I, even though I'm not KJV only, uh, if, if you know what that is, King James only, you know, some people would say it's only valid translation. Um, it's a good translation and I don't have a problem with too much with people saying that it's only translation you should use, I get it. I grew up in a church that taught that. But, that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. And hopefully, since I'm reading from the King James anyway, um, you'll be willing to listen to this Bible, if, or this sermon, um, if you do have problems with the New King James or other translations. Just want to be inclusive as I, with every, uh, I just want to be inclusive, um, with everybody as much as possible without sacrificing uh, standards. The question on objection is this. Will people who have never heard the gospel all go to hell because they haven't heard about Jesus Christ? People say this a lot. This is a very common objection, specifically to Christianity from the atheist to make a believe an excuse not to believe in God, as well as somebody that believes in God but just doesn't want to convert to Christianity. Um, this is either because they don't like the fact that they have to repent, 
uh, and shrimp from sin, or because they honestly just can't get over the fact that it seems unfair. So I want to answer this question by quoting a verse from the Bible, and then we'll read the comment. Um, but it's Romans chapter 2, verse 12. And I'm going to start in verse 8. Actually, verse 7. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but to them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does the evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no difference, there's no respect of persons with God. And here's verse 12. This is what I want to camp on. For as many as have sinned without the law also will perish without the law. Perish is returning to not only physical death, but eternal death. Um, and that's why, well, we'll see in a minute. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. So let me read this comment um, in the Bible, and then we'll go from there. No one will go to hell because they haven't heard of Jesus Christ. The heathen or that is unbelievers, Gentiles, in other words, those people that aren't saved, even though the gospel is to Gentiles too, just means those that are not Jews, because uh, in the beginning of the Bible, before salvation, the plan of salvation was extended to everybody, it was just particularly to God's favorite country, the Jews. No reason for that is just he decided to show grace upon them. But in the bigger picture, he always planned to have salvation available to both Jews and Gentiles. Unbeliever, believers and unbelievers. I mean, Jews and, and, and um, unbelieving Gentiles. So he knew that's all that means in, in this version of the Bible. Uh, the heathen will go to hell for murder, rape, adultery, lust, theft, lying, etc. Sin is not failing to hear the gospel. See, I I got this even in in so you know where I was growing up. I heard this a lot. I heard, you know, you are going to sin because you send yourself there. Uh, well, that's partly true. But what I was meant to say was, you go to hell because you reject Jesus. That's not true. I mean, it might be true to a certain degree, but more importantly. And from that verse that I read in verse 12, uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 12, and you can read that in any translation, it'll say essentially the same thing. We go to hell because we have violated God's eternal decreed moral law, the Ten Commandments. Um, and just think about this. I said this in my past two Sermon Sunday videos, but who hasn't? told a lie at least one lie and it only makes you it only takes one lie to become a liar just like it only takes one murder to become a murderer and on top of that you say oh well it, it, it was you know it was once and I'm not going to do it again. Well, if you go to the court and you're guilty of a crime or murder, and you say, it was once and I'm never going to do it again, they're going to throw the look at you. You still have to pay the consequences. Um, another one, who hasn't stolen, right? Oh, and time doesn't forgive, by the way. Right? You can't say, well, I lied, but that was in the past. Well, the murder was in the past. You're still going to go to jail for it if convicted, if found guilty. Um... And the Bible says all liars will have their kind of like a fire. It says it in Revelation. You can look that up on an app on your phone. The Bible app is a great app. You just put in the search button, you know, whatever verse you're looking for, the words, and it'll find that verse for the most part. Pretty good at it. Um, who hasn't, uh, and maybe not everybody, but theft, right? Whether it be cheating on a test, whether it be stealing time from work by going on break longer than you're supposed to, and I'm guilty of this, uh, and I'll admit it, 
not proud of that fact, but I've taken extra time not working and kind of just relaxing than I'm, when I'm supposed to be working because I'm too tired and I try to make an excuse, but, um, and I don't do that, you know, anymore, even though I've done it in the recent past, but, it's, you know, so, but I don't plan on ever doing that again, just to be honest. Um, you know, when it could be money from your parents, maybe you steal, uh, a dollar, right, from my mom's purse when you're growing up. Again, in the past, but it doesn't matter, it's still valid as a crime. Um, and one dollar, taking one dollar from somebody's purse, your mom or dad's purse, or safe, doesn't make you, or wallet, doesn't make you any more a thief than when you take a hundred dollars. Because it's the action of the crime you've committed not the not the extent of the crime but the crime itself for example you go to you go to jail for killing somebody and you say well it was you know it was a it was an instant death it wasn't as bad as you know Hitler when he suffocated all those people in the in the gas chambers well it doesn't matter it's still murder and you're still going to go to jail for it. Um, you know, another one is lust. And this is a big one. Because Jesus said, You have heard it said of old in the Ten Commandments. He's referring to, Do not commit adultery. And then he said, He reiterated it. And said, But I say unto you. And he took it to its core and he said, I say unto you, Because he's God and he can speak for God. He who looks upon a woman to lust after her, right, has committed adultery with her in his heart. Because he was expounding on the fact that God looks at the inward intent, not just the outward. Because it's the same thing with murder. He said, you have heard it said of old, if you hate somebody, you're a murderer. Because it starts in the inward, right? You say, oh man hate that person, I'm going to kill him, right, and in that, in your heart, you kill them, and it's the same thing with adultery, if you're looking at porn, right, and this is something that I struggle with, even as a, after a, being a Christian, and um, thankfully, by God's grace, I've gotten freedom in that area, but it doesn't mean I'm better than you, it just means that God's working in me, and I praise God for that, but when you're doing that, you're essentially having sex with that person in your mind and in your heart. So that's what Jesus was getting at. And it's because of these things that God says no adulterer will enter the kingdom of heaven. See, that's God's standard is, is perfection because he's perfect and he can't let unperfection go into a perfect place being heaven. And because we violated God's law, we deserve it's an eternal law, we deserve an eternal fine. Because it's like this. If we lie or steal or hurt one of our kids, right? Well, maybe not hurt, but, but do something minor. Lie to our kids. It's not, you know, nothing really is going to happen. You lie to your kid, maybe you get into a fight with your wife. Why did you do that? But for the most part, there's no retribution. Or the kid can't do anything about it. Because he's your kid, and you know, well, that is if they're a child, and they're small. Um, if they're a teenager, they can give you sass, and if they're older, they can, well, you know, they can even kill you. I mean, I've seen even young kids do that before. Well, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. Um, but the point that I'm making is, we deserve hell. It's what we deserve. And we go to hell because of the crime that we've committed against God and the law is written on our hearts so we can't say well I didn't know better no in your heart you have a conscience right you have a conscience that's written in your conscience it says this in the Old Testament and it applies today and the new in the new covenant right um, that uh, where was I going with this that well, yeah, so, you know, uh, oh, yeah, it's written in our conscience. We know better. The, the law, the Ten Commandments, 
You know, you don't have to have seen the law to know that killing is wrong. You don't have to see the law and be told not to lie. When you lie, you immediately feel guilty. You ever seen a kid get caught eating a cookie from the cupboards when he wasn't supposed to? And the mom confronts him and says, Why are you eating the cookie? And he goes, No. And you can see the look of guilt on his face. So, sin is not feeling to hear the gospel. Rather, sin is transgression of the law. If we care about the law, so we will become missionaries to take the good news of God's forgiveness in Christ to see them. And there's so much truth in that. And I was thinking about this the other day. For those of you who are atheists on this channel, and I mean this with the uttermost respect, and I just want to point out some error and foolishness. I'm not calling you a fool. Well, maybe you are, but I'm not calling you an idiot or a moron. I'm just saying that you're kind of ignorant to the truth, even though you think that you're not, and, you know, that's fine, we can disagree with that, I'm still your friend, or I'm willing to be, and I'd be cordial about this, but it's foolishness to, to, to fight your whole life against God and try to prove he's not real when you use the argument, oh, so if I believe in this flying spaghetti monster, does, he mean, that, does that mean that he's real? So essentially, you're you're alluding the fact that belief in God is like belief in the sp flying spaghetti monster or Santa Claus. Well, why would you find your whole, take your whole life? And I have never seen a person committing his whole life to fighting and proving that Santa Claus doesn't exist. You know, we try to do this against God because inherently in our heart, we know that God exists and that He requires. Moral perfection, maybe not to that perfect extent, but we know that he demands righteousness. And if you go on a, and and that's why we have missionaries to. But well, I was gonna go back to this. But as a Christian, it only makes sense that if I really believe that people are going to hell because of their violation against God, I want to warn them and tell them the good news that Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Jesus said, I have not come into the world to condemn the world, to condemn the world, but that the world, right, through him, through Jesus, might be saved. So, Jesus came to live for us the perfect life that we can, and then suffer under the wrath of God on the cross. It's fun when he was in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. He was talking about the cup of God's wrath being poured on the cross when he died. You see, it wasn't the, the scars in his hand, the nails in his hand, the beating of the whiplash to crown in his story, that that was what how he paid for our fine, our sin. Yes, it's part of it. The main thing is he suffered under the wrath of God. The Bible says that it pleased the Lord to cross the Son. And it doesn't mean that God is some evil God out there. It means that in the chief end of things, it pleased God because he knew that through the crushing of his son, that he will redeem his creation unto himself so that he will be in a relationship with those that he died for, right? And so that's why we find it necessary as Christians to... Let people know the good news and warn people, yeah, there's hell, but Jesus came to save those from hell. Because if we repent and put our faith in Christ, that's like turning to Christ and saying, here, I'll take that fine and accepting it. And there's nothing you can do but accept it. The turning from sin is only so you can turn to Jesus. You can't have your sin over here and Jesus over here and go, all right, Jesus, come over here. That won't happen. You have to turn to him and accept the gift. And the, the way to accept it is to trust in him. Stop trusting in yourself and your self-goodness and trust in Christ. And it's our that's why we feel compelled as Christians to do that. We have to share the good news so we can see others in heaven with us and restore creation unto God. And there's the power of God for God uh, uh, Romans 1.16, for I, 
And Paul was writing about himself, but this applies to all Christians if you're truly a Christian. This is, should be your mentality, I and mean, it would be if you truly have a change of heart. For I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of me, for it is the power of God, sorry, unto salvation unto everybody that believes. I kind of messed up a few words there, but that's the, the point, is the gospel is what's going to restore fellowship of man to God and save man from going to hell and to begin with God. And the verse through that is John 16, 9. I'm going to just read that really quick. That's in the Old Testament. I'm just kidding. It's in the New. John 16, 9. And 17 is a long chapter. So it's 16, 16, 33 verses. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Actually, let me read verse 7. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, or that is necessary, for you that I go away. For if I go and not away, the Comforter, that is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. So that's the point right there. Going back to the original thing. Yeah, we go into hell because we don't believe on Jesus. But we also, for the main point, don't go to hell because we don't repent and put our faith in Jesus. So I guess you could say it's both and. But it's not that, oh, well, you rejected Jesus, so you're going to hell. No. How do you reject Jesus? By choosing the Lord and sin. So I hope that kind of cleared things up. And I wanted to say one more thing. Oh, yeah. Let me read verse 7 again of John chapter 16. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I, Jesus, so okay, for I, uh, for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, like I said, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. So, basically, what Jesus is proving is the Trinity. Is that the Comforter... Jesus has to go to heaven so the Comforter can be brought down the Holy Spirit. He didn't say, I'm going to heaven so I can come back. He's saying, I have to go to heaven so I can send the Comforter back. So that totally defeats the argument for Jehovah's, uh, for people, and it was not Jehovah's Witness, but for people to say that the Holy Spirit is the same as Jesus. That's called modalism, and it's a heresy. It's a very heretical idea. Some people believe it. I'm not saying they're heretics. Some people just don't know better. But if you know better, you, I would I would urge you to repent on that sin. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoy that. That was Sermon Sunday. Uh, that has been going on for 20 minutes and not 37 seconds. So I'm going to end it here. Hope you found that interesting and that inspired and um, motivated you and propelled you, most importantly, to get right with God.